Perfect. Perfect. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. As you will see, I'm in the garage, which only means one thing. I'm working on my Mark II Escort. So I recently put out a video explaining what's been going on over the three, four months periods that I haven't uploaded a Mark II Escort video. Now I explained that I've been removing all of the underseal off of the undersides and my plans to get the underside completely done before the end of 2024. And I'm happy to announce that in this video, we're gonna get the underside all done and it's gonna look so good. I'm, I'm so excited. Anyway, let me show you guys what I've been doing. As you can see, this is the near side front wheel arch, which is all primered. And it's also got the tiger seal, which I applied in the last episode. Now I'm happy to say this tiger seal has worked a lot better than the body sealant that I was previously using it hasn't cracked it's left a really nice finish and overall i'm really happy so i've started to carry on and do some of the underside but i've still got a lot more to do this is how the underside is looking as you can see i've got my big large tunnel which i previously installed earlier this year and all of the underside is now in epoxy primer it looks so good it's actually really nice and satisfying nice and smooth but this does need to be all seam sealed. There's just another shot of the underside. It looks so good, even if it is just in primer. I've now come into the offside wheel arch, and as you can see, this is all in primer now. Not one bit missed. Every single join, every single gap has been reached and removed the original underseal. Really, really happy with how this has come out. This was the last bit that I was removing the underseal on. So as you can all see, exciting times. I've spent so long removing the underseal. I'm just really, really excited to get the underside transformed and looking how I want it to. So what I'm gonna do now is apply the tiger seal. I've gone for the white one again, as I said in the last video, because it's beige, I didn't wanna do black underseal and see it once I've put the protective coating on. So I wanna go white, which is a nice light color, and then the beige will go over this. Right, I'm gonna try and calm my excitement and get seam sealing, and then I'll catch up with you guys once it's all done. Right, it's now the next day. I spent a couple of hours yesterday evening doing the Tiger Seal on the underside of the Escort and I'm happy to now say that it's all sealed up. I've got every nook and cranny. Some people might say that I went a little bit OTT but I wanna make sure it's all watertight and completely protected from the elements. So yeah, I did put Tiger Seal on some welds and some other places, just wanted to give them that little bit more protection. Now here is how the underside is looking. I'm really, really happy with it. Honestly looks so good. There's this tiniest patch just over here that I must have missed. So I'm gonna whack a bit of primer on that in a minute. But yeah, I tried to do the seam sealing as neat as I could. And I'm really happy with how it's come out. There's lots of tiger seal around the large gearbox tunnel. I just wanted to make sure that there was no pinholes or anything, so yeah. It is looking really, really good. As you can see, all down that chassis rail has been seam sealed on this offside and coming into the offside front wheel arch. It just looks so satisfying. Yeah, really, really happy with how this is looking. Now the next step is to mask everything up because I don't want to be getting any paint or overspray on my engine bay. This is freshly resprayed, even though it's very, very dusty, it is mint. So I need to mask up all this area, I need to mask up along both sides of the car to make sure I don't get any overspray. And then I'll talk about the products that we're gonna be using. Thank you. 
I've spent a good 45 minutes to an hour just masking up everywhere. I've masked up all the holes on the inner wing. I've also masked up all of the engine bay. I've got this little hole here, but that's to allow me to bring this up when I'm underneath of the Escort. As you can see, strut top is all masked up. I've doubled up just because I don't know how strong the gun's gonna be. I don't want it to blow through. And I have also masked up both sides of the car. I've left a bit of a lip here, uh, just sort of where the wing and the doors ends, so I can sort of blow it in. And then when I eventually get the Escort resprayed, they can sort of go up to that line. As you can see, there's no holes on the inner wheel arches for the paint to go. So it should all go in the wheel arch, hopefully, and not all over the rest of the car. I think what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna tackle this wheel arch and the other side, and also do the chassis legs, because I've got my axle stands on the chassis legs further down. So if I can get one can out of these front two arches, I can let that set overnight, then I can move my axle stands over to the front, and then I can, completely do the rest of the undersides. But honestly, the excitement is really building now. I just can't wait to see this all in beige. So let me show you guys what product I'm gonna be using. So I purchased these products a couple of months ago from Leonard Brooks in Harlow, very local to me, and they are so helpful when you go in there. Anyway, I went in looking for some Raptor coating because that's all I've really heard of. It's a brand of Undersil, and they recommended this Pro XL tough ox tintable underseal. I'm not quite sure if you're even meant to call it underseal, but it says tough ox is a high performance 2K polyurethane structured coating, giving ultimate protection for truck bed lining and many other industrial applications. It also goes on to say tough ox provides a extremely durable, impact resistant and impermissible, impermissible imper impermeable finish that is available in standard black or tintable version and i've gone for the tintable version i'm just reading the mixing instructions now it says this product is colorless so requires tinting before use it says add 120 ml of solvent based tinter of your choice followed by one full can of tough ox hardener so we've got two cans. I'm not quite sure how far they're going to go. Um, I've also got a litre of my beige paint, which was colour matched to the car. And I've also got these two Diddy little hardeners. What I have also purchased is this Sealy air operated underbody coating gun. So this is long enough for the cans. And yeah, this is just going to run off the uh, air compressor. Cool, I nearly thought I wasn't gonna be able to do this job today because I didn't have a attachment that fitted on the spray nozzle, but luckily I've just chopped off the end for now and put a Jubilee clip on there. I'll attach the other end once I'm finished, but yeah, I really wanna get this done. So let's crack this open, get the paint poured out and the hardener in. got sort of two seals so I've taken off this plastic one and it has like a foil but I don't want any of that foil to go into the product so I have to gently open it up a bit 125 mil this is gonna be hard to do neatly quite a bit of paint all right that's the paint just gonna get that whacked in now doesn't seem like there's enough room for all of it, but there must be, because I'm reading the instructions off the other bottle, and it does say 125 mil. And last but not least, not sure how to open this weird little cap. Probably a child lock to stop me from getting in. <laughs> Let's bung all of that in. With that all in, I've put the metal cap back on, and I just need to shake this for two minutes. Oh, I've waited for this moment for so long. All of these long nights out here in the garage getting covered in rubbish. Now to apply my new underseal. I don't even know if you'd call it underseal, to be honest. It just says tough ox tintable, sort of, I don't know. Now it is December, but it is quite mild. It's about nine, 10 degrees at night at the moment, so that's all right. And uh, I've got the little heater going, so yeah, this should set nicely. I've put the camera back a little bit. I just don't want it to get covered if this starts to splat out everywhere. 
But yeah, let's let's give it a go. Oh my god. Oh that looks so good. That looks so good. I think you all know what I'm about to say. Look at this. Oh my God. I am so happy with the results. Look at it, it just looks so good. And it was so easy to apply. I was just spraying it and you get like a light mist and then you go over it more and you get a bit more sort of texture. I don't think you could get any runs on this to be honest. If you just held it down, it would run, but it'd be a massive sort of gloop. It's lovely to work with. You can put it on as thick or as thin as you want. And yeah, I am just so, so happy. I will put the torch on, but sometimes it does flicker away. It does look more white under the torch, but it is beige. It's the same color as the car. Now I ran out of paint. So that one tub didn't even do the first wheel arch, which is a little bit disappointing, but it just means I need to get more paint. I sort of underestimated how much I'd need. It's now the next day and I did actually run out of the Tough Ox Tintable under seal yesterday. I only ordered two cans to start off with. I didn't know how far that was gonna get me. So I've been back down to Leonard Brooks today and I've picked up three more cans because I'm roughly guesstimating that's what I'm gonna need to finish the underside off. Here is my restocked Tough Ox Tintable under seal. As I said, I've got three cans and it comes with the hardener as well. I didn't need to buy any more beige paint because I've already got that, so that should last me. I've got to put 125 mil in each can as we go along. Obviously picked up a cheeky Dr Pepper, but more importantly, let's have a little look and see what it looks like now that this side is dried. Here is the near side front wheel arch, which is nearly 100% done. As you can see, it just looks so good. Every time I look at this, I just get such a satisfied feeling knowing that it's all been bare metal, there's no rust hiding under there. And yeah, I'm just really, really happy with the overall finish. It just looks brilliant. I could not have asked for a better product. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way. First time using a product and yeah, I just went with the paint shop's recommendation and I think you'll all agree that it looks brilliant. Also yesterday, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that I was gonna do the front of the chassis rails. They've both come out so good and what I've done is I sort of had this masking tape and the plastic over it so it sort of feathered it in to the chassis rails and that will just blend in nicely with the rest of the fresh bay and here's the other chassis leg all complete really really happy with the finish and you will notice that I've moved my axle stands up the front here to the bit that's already been painted obviously there's a bit of cardboard protecting the paint now because yeah We've got to look after the underside now that it's looking nice and fresh. Now I did move onto this offside front wheel arch, but I didn't get too far. There's still a lots of primer on there and I haven't even started on the inside of that front wing. And I've also got the rest of the underside to do because that's still in primer along with the gearbox tunnel. So let's hopefully get that done now. Now, just before I go and finish off the underside, I wanted to talk about a uh, problem that I came across. So the Schutz gun, it comes with this massive, long, sort of flexible attachment. Now I put this on to try and do some tight areas on the near side front wheel arch. And as you can see, the paint went through most of it, but it just stopped at the end. So I unscrewed it, made sure that the paint was coming through with the normal little nozzle on the ends. And I tried this again, but the paint just wouldn't come through. I just think it's a bit too long. So what I've done is I've cut it in half. I've put the attachment on the ends and I'm gonna try again because I really wanna get under the lip of the wheel arch. And there's just a couple of really tight areas that I wanna sort of put this in. So that's why I said that this wheel arch is nearly done because I just wanna do a few nooks and crannies with this piece. But hopefully now that I've shortened it, this will overcome the issue. 
But apart from that, I didn't really have any other issues applying the Tough Ox. So yeah, it's just a bit messy. There's a lot of overspray, so you've got to watch out um, with everything else that's in the garage. But luckily, I've got lots of old bed sheets to cover up everything. Anyway, I think that's enough waffling. I'm going to enjoy a bit of this Dr Pepper and start to finish off the underside of the Mark II Escort. Okay, so here is the finished product. Honestly, I've not stopped staring at the underside for a good 10, 15 minutes. It looks so good. So it was slightly more difficult to apply the Tough Ox uh, just because of the space, to be honest. If this was up on a ramp, it'd be much easier, but I've got it all applied and I think you'll all agree that that looks brilliant. So yeah, as I say, it was a little bit more difficult to apply it just because the way I've got the car jacked up it's sort of sitting like that so the further I get to the back the less space I've got to spray the underside but honestly I'm so so happy with how it's looking you probably would have seen in the time lapse when I was mixing up the first batch of tough ox I spilt it all over my toolbox but it's just on the matting so I can always get a new one of them so I was a bit gutted about that but I managed to get two cans on the underseal and I went to make the third one but unfortunately I ran out of paint so I ran out of my beige paint this is completely empty now that was a litre so I have got a tiny bit left to do on the offside front wheel arch so I'll be getting some more of this and finishing that off very soon but honestly I'm so happy with how the underside is looking and I'm so satisfied to know that I've bare metaled all of that there's no rust I've primed it sealed it up and now I've applied that tough ox and yeah it's going to be such a durable coating and it looks brilliant because it's body colour as well. Now something I thought I would quickly mention is how much this stuff cost me. This is without VAT so you've got to add uh, VAT on top. So two of the tintable tough ox cans were 40 quid without VAT so they're about 20 quid each. Um, I don't know what that would be plus fat. I might work it out and stick it on the screen. And the one litre of beige paint, which was matched to my sample that I've just run out of, that was £55. And then you've got to add VAT on that as well. But I didn't use the whole litre on the underside because I got some of that paint put into the aerosols, which I sprayed the inside of the Mark II Escort with a little while ago now. So yeah, I've used 125 times 4, which is which is 500 mil, so I must have used 500 for the aerosols. But anyway, I'm gonna get some more paint and finish off that section, but for now, honestly, the results are uh, incredible. But the thing I'm most excited about is the fact that the underside is now done, or is gonna be done for 2024. The start of the year, and we can just start building it up, I've already got the coilovers that I haven't showed you guys. I've already got quite a lot of parts that I've been accumulating and I just haven't been putting them on because I've been stripping and dealing with the underside of the Escort. And I know it's taken me a little while to complete the underside, but yeah, I'm raring to go now. 2024, we're gonna have this Escort on the road. Now, I don't really do New Year's resolutions, but that would be mine. Uh, yeah, I am getting this Escort on the road. I cannot wait to drive it. On a bit more of a personal note now, I want to thank all of you guys who watch the videos and continue to support the channel. Honestly, in 2023, the channel has seen some crazy views. We hit over 2 million views this year and I've nearly got 10,000 new subscribers to the channel. Even saying them numbers absolutely blows my head. It's really, really crazy. But I just want to thank you guys for watching the videos. I will keep them coming every Thursday at 6pm. You know the drill. 
Anyway, I think that's about all we've got time for. I'm going to be putting this video out between Christmas and New Year, so I hope you've all had a great Christmas and are enjoying the festive period. And I just want to wish you all a happy New Year and roll on 2024. And one last thing, if you've stayed right to the very end of this video, whack in the comment section below what your favourite video was on the channel this year. I'm really interested to know and yeah, thank you for you guys who watch right to the very end of the videos. Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.